Well, Jody, game two is in the past. It's in the books. And now the Blue Jackets have to look to this game three. So when they went back and, and the coaches went over the video and, and the players went back and looked at things and probably uh, thought about it for a long time after the game the other night, what must they do here in game three to change their fortunes, to get back to the success that they had in game one? They got to get more jump in their game, more determination on a lot of situations without the puck to start. Um, I thought they controlled the game in game one. In game two, they let Toronto control it uh, by letting them get stretched out a little bit, running around. Uh, but the key number one is stay out of the penalty box. It just it cuts the rhythm. It lets the best players for the Toronto Maple Leafs just touch the puck, have the puck, feel the puck, be on the ice. And it takes for some of your best players, like Dubois, who's not killing penalties, and it sits them on the bench. Uh, and it just kills the rhythm and the flow of the bench. So a four-line team like the Columbus Blue Jackets, they need to stay out of the penalty box and allow your team to play. They need to play on their toes, and they all need to just have the initiative to play from inside out. Protect the blue paint. You, we saw odd man rushes last game. That was That's not a characteristic of this team. And get the forecheck going. Make the adjustment so that you can get in on the forecheck with speed on, on the first guy and get in there and disrupt the breakout of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Toronto bro, bro, uh, broke out the puck, excuse me, way too easy in game two. And that allowed them to get out and then into the Blue Jackets zone. Blue Jackets need to get the forecheck going. Maybe take the body if they can, but I think the key is going to be in front of their net and then, again, trying to just get out of their zone cleaner and not allow Toronto to get out of their zone so clean. I mean, the Blue Jackets, too. A few passes, you know, just a tape-to-tape pass. It seems like a simple thing, but the Blue Jackets weren't doing that, and that disrupted themselves and their flow of getting out of the zone. So kind of a, a mixed bag there, Bob, but to sum it up, stay out of the box, good passes, good forecheck, and disrupt the Leafs from getting out of their own end clean. You mentioned Pierre-Luc Dubois. I want to ask you about him. Uh, John Tortorella was not pleased with him during game two. This guy is your number one centerman. Uh, They do expect a lot out of him. He can bring a lot. Uh, What did he bring in game one that he didn't bring in game two, and what must he provide individually in this third game? He's a physical presence, and I don't mean throwing the body. I mean just – taking up space with his size, imposing his will on others, uh, being that player that is just tough to play against because when he has the puck or when he doesn't have the puck, he can move so fast. uh, He can change the momentum of a shift or change the direction of a play. I just need to see him a little more determined on the puck in some of those plays. I thought a few times he was cruising a bit or, you know, trying to make a long pass. And this Blue Jackets team is really good at making that short play those in tight plays. And that's what Dubois needs to be is more, you know, you see him on the forecheck using his big body, but he's also changing gears with the puck when he has it. There's a, there's a determination level he has. And is it fair to say that, you know, when he's playing with that tenacity, uh, when, when he's playing in your face, that, uh, that he's a major difference maker. He can be a major difference maker in the game. Oh yeah. I mean, he's, He's a young man, but he, he's built like a swimmer, and he know, understands how to use his body. There's been times where you think of some of the three-on-three plays uh, in overtime this season. He'll bait the player to come in slow and thinks he, he's got a containment on Pierre-Luc Dubois. And as soon as he gets there, Dubois uses that momentum, like Forsberg used to do, and just spin off and use the momentum you've just pushed on him to get away from you. He, he's very good at that. He's good at keeping his hands away from his body when he has the puck keeping it away from the defenders. And his, his feet and the way he chatters them, uh, he creates separation pretty quick. We didn't see that drive from him. Uh, but, yeah, I would say you're accurate in that. And defensively for the Blue Jackets, we talk about their guys there. They're all solid. Uh, they can all play. Uh, you know, I'm really interested to see what changes John Tortorella is going to make. And, and that's not just personnel changes line changes. I mean, he had them all mixed up uh, by the end of of game two, just trying to find something. I'm interested to see um, if he can find a formula for this third game. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I thought he had a pretty balanced line sheet there to go into game one. Um, You know, Wenberg, Atkinson, Foligno, that's a good veteran line. That's a line that uh, two guys scored on that line in game one, but they also did a great job against Tavares and his line. Um, that matchup got away from them a little bit. 
I don't know. I mean, he's got the pieces that he can he can use. And one thing Torch does well is he goes with the guys that are going in the moment. So, listen, whatever he starts with tomorrow night for game three, uh, if there's a player on one line that's being a bit of an anchor or, or slowing things down, I mean, then he'll switch it up. So he's got to go with the hot hand. This is this is a short series. It's now best of three. Uh, so look for him to really, really dig in here and see what combination uh, he can get out. Not to, not not to really match up, so to speak, against the Leafs all the time. Uh, he will be the home team now. That changes it a little bit for him. But maybe to take it to the the Leafs a little bit in situations where he can put a lot of talent or speed on the line and try to jump them and and just. Look for him to change the look throughout the game quite a bit. And the last thing for you on this, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs were under incredible pressure after losing the first game. They may be in a bubble, but that bubble happens to be in Toronto. They know everything that's going on, everything that's being said about them. They responded really well in the second game. But how much is that pressure still there for them? Or because they are the Toronto Maple Leafs, is that pressure just always constantly going to be there because of who they are? That's an interesting point. I think it is. I think it's uh, they understand the pressure. When Mitch Marner walks away from game one and sees he hasn't had a shot on net, uh, I think that that really, obviously really burned him. He took a shot his first shift last or uh, yeah last night in that game. Yeah, he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be these players. They feel the pressure. They understand the pressure. They want the pressure. But you're right. They also understand how quick this series is gonna be. So pressure's on both teams right now. But you're right. I think the Leafs. They always get the best of the opponent because they are the Maple Leafs and everyone wants to just knock them off because they get all the attention. So, you know, they're used to it. Now it's up to the Blue Jackets to rise again. I did forget one thing. Jake Muzzin gets knocked out of that yeah. game uh, at the end, which was terrible. Uh, I know mm -hmm. they took him outside the bubble to a hospital. So there's going to have to be adjustment by the Toronto Maple yeah. Leafs there. He is, I, I think he's their number one defensive guy, obviously. How much could that change what the Leafs are, are doing defensively, which is is their weakness? I mean, their forwards are their strength. Defensively is where they're a little bit weaker anyway. He reminds me of David Savard, not just because of the beard, but for the intangibles he does down low. He blocks some massive shots in game two. Uh, he, he does a good job of keeping the game simple. We hope he's well. Uh, there's been positive reports, but we hope he's well. And uh, that's going to be a big hole to fill for – uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, we'll see. But uh, you know what I mean? You're right. They talk about their back end being a little weak, but I, I, I would have been impressed with how they've stayed within their limits and understood their roles and, and played within their system uh, pretty good back there. 8 o'clock game tonight. It is on Fox Sports Ohio. Jody Shelley's got it for you there. I've got it for you on the Blue Jackets Radio Network. Our pregame will start at 7 o'clock this evening. This has been the Rick Report, and it's been brought to you by Tell Ohio Credit Union. For Jody Shelley, I'm Bob McElligot. Enjoy the game. <laughs>